Hello gamers, my name is Rushcode, and in this video, we're going to be learning how to make a pawn from scratch. So what this pawn can do is you can go forward, you can go backward, you can go left, you can go right, you can go up, down, and turn it all around. And one of the reasons we would want to make something like this is because in a world or a game environment that you've built, you'd want to be able to navigate it in a very easy and simplistic way, like what I'm doing right now. So let's get right into it. Step one, open a blank project. So when you open Unreal Engine, you might see some recent projects that you've made like me. You can go to games and open a new project. What you want to do is click on blank. So blank will open, as it says here, a clean, empty project with no code. But there's this uh, funny background thing going on in here. So I'll show you what that's about. We'll just type in something like uh, on project create and this is our project. However, we don't really want these background settings going on here. It's supposed to be a blank project. So how do we get rid of all of this uh, weird stuff here? We can't even do anything with it. You could delete it, but you can't move it or do anything else with it. So what you really want to do is go to file, new level, and then you can see, oh, look at that, basic. That's what we really want. Or maybe an open world, empty open world or an empty level. I think open world is for networking games, so we're not doing that. So let's just go to basic, create, and now it's overwritten the other thing. And this is much easier to work in, right? So this is this is really what we want. And you can see right now, I'm already using some kind of default pawn or spectator class to navigate this thing. However, if I go and play, I can still do that, but it may not have any functionality that I want for how this pawn moves around. So if you want to make your own, step two, Set up your input settings. So let's go to project settings over here. And if it's not open, you can go to edit project settings. And in here, you want to scroll down to input. Under input, you will see something called axis mappings. I'm going to click the plus sign, click the drop down, and you can see there's a new axis mapping that we just created. If I just delete this and press it again, it'll create it again. And then you want to make sure you open this drop down so you can see the key value that you want to put in for that. I'm going to rename this to move forward and backward. And we usually want to use WASD for this sort of movement. So I'm going to say moving forward is a W key. And I want to have an S for moving backwards. So I'm going to add another axis mapping to this group and click S for this. But because S is meant for backwards movement, we want the scale to be negative one. This will automatically take care of what values are being fed into your system when you press W or S to move forward or backward with positive or negative one. Next, we want to make an axis mapping for moving left and right, or strafing left and right. So let's call this strafe right left. Make two mappings for this. The first one is going to be moving to the right, so D, and moving to the left, which is A. Make sure the left movement is negative one, then you're done, and make the next axis mapping. This one's going to be for moving up and down. Once again, make two axis mappings for this one. First is going to be moving up, which I prefer space. So space will move me up, and left control will move me down. Let's put a negative one on the control. Next two axis mappings you want to create are to do with rotations. So using your mouse to turn your camera movement left and right, up and down. If you want to turn left and right, let's say turn right, left. And we only need one mapping for this because we're going to use mouse, mouse X. What mouse X does is it records your sideways movement left and right for your mouse cursor. And you want to keep this positive one because when your mouse moves to the left, it will take a negative input and give it to the system anyway. This next one is going to be looking up and down. Naturally, we're going to use mouse Y for this one. But make sure you set this as negative one. And I can't explain why that is the case exactly, but it has something to do with the way Unreal Engine interprets the mouse input when it moves up and down. So it needs to, we need to invert it so that when you move your mouse down, the camera actually tilts down. But originally, it will do the opposite if I put positive one. It probably has something to do with the Cartesian plane being flipped upside down, but I'm not too sure. If you guys know, let me know down in the comments below. Step three, create a pawn and add a camera to it. So let's go back to our map. And before we go any further, let's just save this map. So I'm going to do save control S. We'll call this basic map. And now if we go to content, we can see that our basic map is there. Over here, we want to make a pawn. So we're going to go to blueprint class. And you see this pawn here? That's a trap. You don't want to pick that one. That's not going to give you what you need. You want to pick this pawn, which is a very specific type that is a character that can walk and apparently fly as well and swim and do other things. So we're going to click character. I'm going to call this panda. 
Why did I call it panda? Well, it's related to the word pawn, but it's a play on the word. So if you guys can figure out why I chose this, leave a comment down below and I'll tell you if you got it right. So go ahead and open panda and in the viewport, you can see there's no camera. So first thing you want to do is click on capsule component and add a camera. We can leave it as camera. And the reason we want a camera is because it allows us to control angles and directions in a more precise way compared to just using the capsule component. Or at least that's what I found in my experience. And you can do a whole bunch of other things with cameras too. But in order to take full advantage of this, you want to make sure you select Use Pawn Control Rotation and set it to True. This will allow you to copy or follow what the pawn is doing, but in a more accurate way. It's a bit hard to explain, but basically it makes your life easier in the long run. You'll also want to go to character movement and make sure that the default land movement mode is set to flying. And this is for certain reasons later to do with moving up and down, but I'm going to set this to walking just for now so that we can create an error later, which explains why we need this to be flying. Step four, make a game mode base. So if you go back to your content folder, right click blueprint class, you want to make a game mode base. And we're going to call this panda mode. If you open this, you can see that, oh, well, I don't know what, what is this? <laughs> anyway, so we don't want this. Let, let me close that and try that again. Okay, I double click it again. There we go. This is a different, it's a simpler view. And that's because we don't need the viewport or anything like that. So what we want to do is change some of these settings. This is essentially how you tell the game to pick a certain pawn or player controller that you have created to use in your game. We're not going to change anything here except the default pawn. We're going to put Panda for this. There are a few other options for this here, but Panda is really what we want. And that way, when you start playing your game, it will activate this pawn rather than the default pawn that we were using earlier. Hit compile on that and then go to project settings under the project heading. You want to click on maps and modes and change your game mode base to Panda mode. Also change the map. Make sure it's the basic map for loading into your editor and your game default. Okay, back to Panda. Step five making blueprints for your camera to look around. Let's go to event graph and we're going to get rid of all this other stuff. Actually, before that, here's a bonus suggestion. If you want to make it easier for your simulation such that you don't have to click the mouse every time to take control of what's going on in your game, you can set this up. So what this does is it sets your game automatically to game only when you're in the simulation. If I disconnect to this, for example, and click play, you can see my mouse floating around on the screen, right? And then I'd have to click somewhere on the screen to be able to take control of my game. If I reconnect this and hit play, you can see there's no more mouse because I'm automatically able to control my game. Now, the reason I couldn't move or do anything is because there is no actual blueprints for that yet. So let's get onto that. These are the nodes you need to have in order for your mouse to look around in the game. This node right here is the event for turning right and left, which came from our input settings. So if we go to input again, you can see it's over here, turn right left. So this is going to give you a mouse X value, which goes into axis value. And that feeds into the value for adding a controller your input. Now, your is a type of rotation. So if we go to your viewport, you can see that on the camera here, with the rotation tool enabled, your is the blue ring, which is a rotation around the Z axis. So if I change back to my axis, you can see the blue arrow is your Z axis and rotating around that is known as the your. So when I grab that and turn, you can see my camera turns left to right. That's what you want your mouse to do for turning the camera. So to control the yaw input, we just need to feed it an axis value from the mouse and connect those two nodes up. So when we hit play, you can see that moving my mouse left to right, my pawn will turn left to right. If I move my mouse up and down, I don't really go up and down. I just move slightly to the left and right still because I can't move my mouse straight up and down. <laughs> And to fix that, we just need to hook up these two over here. What this will do is grab the information about mouse Y, feed it into the controller pitch input. And pitch is actually the green ring, where if I grab that, you can see my camera tilts up and down. So that's what you want your mouse to do when you move your mouse up and down. So click play, and you can see now when I tilt my mouse up and down, my pawn will look up and down and I can look left and right as well and just turn it all around, which is great. Step six, create movement blueprints for your pawn. These are the movement blueprints that you want to use to control your pawn moving in all the different directions. So for this first one, moving forward and backward, that's your event node, which connects to the input for your move back forward, backward WS keys. So anytime you press WS, it'll feed the value into this bit and change the movement input. Now, the way it's going to change is based on something called a get control rotation and get forward vector. 
because it's not good enough to just give it a value, you have to tell it which way that value is going to be used or in which direction. What get control rotation does is simply get the view rotation of the pawn. So whichever way the pawn is facing based on the camera rotations we did, it will create a vector for that, which you can see is your roll, pitch and your. And I might make a separate video just to explain what these three really are doing or why they why the words are what they are and, and maybe some ways on how we can remember which one is which. But to keep things brief in this video, I'll just use the viewport here to explain how some of those things work. Now you want to connect the ZYOR up to the get forward vector simply because this movement is all about moving forward and rotating in the Z axis is the only thing that should be affecting your movement forward or backward. You could of course allow the pitch to control which way you're moving forward or backward, but what that means is if your camera is tilted down like this, then your whole character is going to move in a downward slope when you press forward. So if I were to demonstrate this in the simulation, I'll connect up the pitch and just make sure a character is flying at the moment. So if I go in here and press backward, I'm actually flying away from the plane. If I press forward, I'll start to fly towards the plane. In some cases, you might want this functionality for your movement forwards and backwards. But for me, I'd rather not do that. And I just want the turning left and right to affect it. So if I move forward and backwards, now you can see I'm not coming off the ground. And if I look in some other direction, I can move in that direction. If I didn't engage the yaw, what happens is I can still look around everywhere. But when I move forward, I'm just going to move in the default forward direction of my pawn when it came into the world. You don't want this at all, so we are going to connect up the yaw and keep it like that. And I'll just switch the character movement back to walking for now. We'll change that in a second again. For strafing right and left, it's a very similar deal. It's just that your vector is going to be a get right vector, which is to do with moving left and right in terms of a direction that's fed into the movement input. And as you can see, I connected up the X roll and the Z yaw. So Z yaw is pretty self-explanatory for moving left and right, because when you turn to the left or the right, you want your entire character to move left and right based on the new angle that you're projecting at. As for the roll, you want this to also be enabled because when you roll, you want to go left and right in those directions as well. For example, if I demonstrated here, let's say this is the front of your camera and you rotate or you roll, you want your character to move like that as well. Or, or maybe in some cases you don't. And if you don't, then you can just force it to move sideways no matter how you're rolling. And all you need to do is cut this noodle off to make that happen. Now, to me, it doesn't really matter if it's connected or not, just because I'm not putting any movements in here that are going to roll the character. So it will always be the default anyway. Now for this last one, that's a bit different. When you want to move up and down, you're naturally going to use the get up vector. And just as a side note for these vectors, get right, get up or get forward. There's actually a few options for this. So let's say you want to do another get forward vector. Notice that this has a camera attached to it. And this has the capsule component in the mesh. You don't want those. You want to make sure you can select this one right here, get forward vector, because that will affect the entire panda. Anyway, so for using the get up vector correctly, you want to just connect the role. I don't think the role really matters in this case as well, but essentially this is what you want for now. And if you were to click play and I press forward and backward, you can go forward and backward, left and right as well. However, if I press space, I don't fly up. If I go off to, let's say, this side over here and drop off the cliff, I'll actually drop off and I can't, no matter how much I press space, I cannot fly up. Well, the reason is because in your character movement, we're still walking. This is why it needs to be set to flying. So now if I play, I can actually press space and there I go, flying off the ground. <laughs> and I can press control to come back down to the ground and go forward, backwards, left and right. But you'll notice that the movements seem to be a little more slippery now. It's not stopping as quickly as I wanted to when I move in a certain direction. That's because you're flying, I guess. It has less friction in the air. So you can change this by going back to your character movement and changing the breaking friction factor to 100. I'm making it large enough that's so that when I move forward and let go, I immediately stop. Or if I fly up and let go, it immediately stops. Same with any other direction. Now, of course, what happens if you connected the pitch or the get up vector? Well, what's going to happen is you're basically going to be able to fly in a certain direction based on how you're tilted. This is useful in some cases, but I don't quite like that because if you were to play this and just look straight down and fly up, you, you, you are flying up, but you're also flying sort of forwards. Yeah, so you're flying forwards. And if I press control, I'm going to fly backwards rather than flying down. And of course, I can fly. So it's just going to be a bit confusing depending on which way you're aiming. I don't want that, so I'd rather not connect the picture. 
but that's all there is to this and look feel free to connect these rotation points however you want and experiment with it that's what i did and found what works for me for my pawn in my particular game world find what works for you based on these different options here but it's more than enough to work with for now if you just want a basic pawn that can just fly around in your game world and inspect things from different angles so why use a camera well Let's say I select this camera and I make it such that it's not going to be hidden in the game. So untick that. When I play, you can't, you still can't see the camera, which is understandable. But if you go to your basic map in this sort of editor space here, where you can also run a simulation, you'll notice that when I play, I can use my camera as usual and my pawn and do whatever I want. And as a bonus, if you wanted to jump out of your camera for whatever reason all you need to do is hold shift and press f1 so you have mouse control and then go to this button over here which pulls you out of your pawn and now i've been ejected so that i'm actually using the default pawn now to do this and the reason i know this is because when i move boom you can see the camera that is from the pawn. It's almost like an astral projection of your own self. It's kind of strange. This allows you to actually do a few other things. For example, if you wanted to check on things like uh, occlusion culling, this is very handy to, to work with. And I'll talk more about that in a future video to do with uh, a special project that I'm working on. Well, that's the end of the video. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this helpful, let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Brush code out. Can I spell? What, what can I spell? <laughs> okay.